on March 17, 2021, the Buffalo Sabres were in the midst of a 12-game losing streak. Countless players in their talented core were frustrated and wildly underperforming. Their defense was poor and their offense was as close to dead as you can get while still being painfully alive. The Sabres were playing in an extremely conservative system that hindered their team play, and it was all down to one man. One man whose coaching style resembled something closer to high school hockey rather than the NHL. This man and coach was Ralph Kruger, and he is, without a doubt, one of the worst, if not the worst coach in Sabres history. The Sabres' continued failures in the 2018-19 season led to the firing of then-head coach Phil Housley. At the beginning of said season, things were looking great for the Sabres. They had a 10-game win streak with some great comeback wins against the Canadiens, Wild, Penguins, plus a thrilling overtime victory over the San Jose Sharks. They continued to keep their heads above water until the end of December, having a record of 21-13-6. However, once the new year hit, the Sabres turned into a new, incredibly terrible team. They became highly inconsistent, and it was clear that their early season form was based on pure luck. Their defense and goals had collapsed, especially in February, where they gave up four plus goals in seven games. The team's offensive output also dried up, with them being shut out or held to one goal multiple times over the last two months. And this was happening despite Phil Housley being touted as an offensive defensive guru, which, if that makes any sense to you, it shouldn't, and you're not reading right or listening. But he was nothing like an offensive defensive guru and after the Sabres missed the playoffs that season he was canned. This could have been the worst thing that happened to the Sabres though as the Bagulas and Jason Botero then looked away from logical proven NHL options having felt burned by the typical NHL status quo. Instead they were going for an outside of the box candidate. People that others had previously discarded or overlooked or plain out ignored. The two most prominent candidates were Ricard Gronberg the Swedish national team head coach, and a hockey outsider named Ralph Kruger. Ralphie Boy's last NHL gig was with the Edmonton Oilers back in 2012-13, where he went 19-22-7 and, and was canned after just a single season. It was a wildly disappointing season for Kruger and the Oilers, as they had high expectations, and after this failure, Kruger departed North America for something a little different. That different thing was to become the chairman of a soccer team. Yes, a soccer team in England. I'm talking about a small club named Southampton FC who's located towards the southern part of the country. Now I can tell what you're thinking and that is how the hell did Ralph Kruger get hired as a chairman of a soccer team in England? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Nobody knows. Southampton's owners claimed he had a track record of being a good leader in major sports, and that was somewhat true, with Kruger having led the Swiss hockey team to heights never seen before and being a participant in some major European hockey conferences. But that didn't necessarily qualify him to run a soccer team, and it was clear from the results that he did in fact have no idea what he was doing. He oversaw the departure of major figures in the club, including managers Maurizio Pochettino and Ronald Koeman, key players like Virgil van Dijk, Sadio Mane, Dusan Tadic, and others. In addition to that, when Kruger took over Southampton in 2014, the club had finished in 8th and were annual contenders for European football, which is pretty good for a club on a small budget. But when he left the team in 2018, they had become a consistent relegation contender in the Premier League, with them sitting in 16th that season. They were only 5 points above the drop zone, and due to this regression plus a new owner taking over the reins, Kruger was let go by Southampton's board and was once again unemployed. Looking back on his legacy with Southampton, it was clear that he and everyone else had no idea what he was doing. He was reportedly never held accountable for the hires he made, including the disastrous hiring of director of football Les Reed. He also instituted an unspoken policy of buying veteran players like Thea Walcott over graduating academy players, which for a small club like the Saints is a big no-no. The cheaper the better, right? Well, apparently not, according to Ralph. And most importantly for him at Southampton, he helped facilitate the transfer of ownership from one stingy English businessman to a corrupt businessman named Zhao Ji Shang. 
So while his legacy is mixed, it's clear that Kruger was certainly influential during his six years in England. Now, why tell all the soccer backstory stuff? Well, it's important to understand why Kruger failed with the Sabres, and we can find a clear answer by seeing what he did prior to his time in Buffalo. And quickly fast forwarding to answering the long desired question as to why he failed here, it's important to remember the word accountability. I mentioned it earlier while discussing his time in Southampton, and I will mention it here again because accountability is something Kruger seemed intent on not having any of. He pushed his inflexible system on players who were not meant for it, and when the expected result would happen, Kruger would blame the players. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go more in depth with the Sabres tenure. Ralph Kruger was hired by the Sabres after a prolonged search on March 15, 2019, signing a three-year deal worth $3.75 million per season. That number goes from $3.75 to $3.9 million, depends on who you ask, but that's the general ballpark area of his salary. He was touted as being an outside-of-the-box hire by Jason Botterill and the Bagulas, and of course the Sabres would get outside-of-the-box practices from him. This was GM Jason Bottle's attempt to solve the DeSabres' defensive issues, as Kruger had previously pitched himself as a strict, defensively structured, and organized hockey coach. Now, this hiring was even more surprising given the reports before his hiring in the weeks prior that Kruger was more interested in a hockey management job, not coaching. But here the Sabres were, hiring a coach out of Europe, hoping he'd be the outside-the-box savior that would send the Sabres' talented but underperforming core to the next level. And prior to his hiring, the Sabres fans had been told that Kruger was a great developer of young talent, which the Sabres had plenty of. But the ominously dark truth about this assumption wouldn't become clear immediately. While Sabres fans were celebrating the Jeff Skinner extension in the summer, Kruger would be carefully composing the, quote, perfect hockey system for the Sabres. And what he eventually came up with looks a little something like this. So, this is how, very quickly, how Ralph Kruger's defensive and conservative system worked. So, let's say you have a four-checking opportunity right here. Kruger wants your team to go in like this. You have your first layer, which are all the way back at the your own red line. You have the second layer here at the blue line for the other team. And then you have your lone immediate four checker here in your third layer for the Sabres. Now, this system can work. It's very suffocating. It's very patient and defensive, as you can see at times, and most times actually, four players are behind the puck for the Sabres. But there are many, 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 many difficulties with this system. And that is, if this player right here in the corner doesn't win this battle, then the whole system falls apart. And I'll show you just why right here and in a clip in a couple seconds. So, let's say this guy loses. Opposing team plays it out wide. They play it to their curling center. Center plays it out to a curling winger. Maybe two. Plays it out there. See, you already have beaten this second layer here for the Sabres. And now you have three guys curling out for the opposing team and going at your final two defensemen. Now, and oftentimes for the Sabres, this kind of forechecking process would take so long that one of these two defensemen would go back to the bench for a change. That means three guys going in on one lone defenseman and odd man rushes would occur every single game because of this guy the sabers did not have enough physical forwards to be able to deal with opposing teams doing this to them they could not deal with it and it eventually led to the sabers having a terrible and i mean terrible defensive record but let's look at it from a real life clip against the montreal canadians in that game where jack eichel kind of blew up and smashed a net in with his stick so we're gonna look at the second goal here for the montreal canadians and uh this came in the second period let's see how it played out so you can already see right here curtis lazar that's your first four checker, and he's the most physical guy on the ice right now, but he loses this, importantly. And already, he's out of the play, and you have four Montreal Canadiens plus another one up the ice going in on four Sabres. Let's continue now. 
So they get it up on the boards, make the way past the blue line and up to center ice. And already you can see how by inviting the pressure here in the second layer, the Canadians are able to easily enter the Sabres zone and get the puck in deep. And they already have three guys going at top speed, going in on two guys almost out of the play and two lone Sabres defensemen. So let's keep it going here. Deneau brings it in, plays it inside for Corey Perry. He spins around, and because that all four of these Sabres defenders were on their heels and not on their toes, it led to one speedy winger, one speedy center, and one outside winger. And look who's wide open, this lone winger out wide. Now let's see what happens. Yep, they scored. Brendan Gallagher. He scored the goal because of the Sabres not being able to accurately and efficiently utilize Kruger's system. Hope that solved a couple issues for you guys. After solving that problem, let's raise a couple more by looking at Kruger's results here in Buffalo. On paper, his first season, the 2019-20 season, that didn't seem all that bad with the team going 30-31-8. But it is bad considering how the team started. The Sabres started the season 9-2-2, having a strong defensive system and players who appear to have bought into Kruger's wise words. But as the year went on, injuries took out some key players and other teams began to figure out how to crack the Sabres' depthless lineup. And when this happened, Kruger was generally outcoached and his X's and O's were never on par with some more experienced NHL coaches. In the end, the Sabres missed the playoffs by just for three points, but they only played 68 games that season, with everything being shut down after the COVID pandemic began. Had the Sabres won two more games over the course of their 68-game season, they would have made the playoffs. But it wasn't this season that got Kruger fired, because boy, oh boy, Ralphie shenanigans don't begin until next season. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to the 2020-21 season. The Sabres came into the 2021 season with higher hopes as new GM Kevin Adams went out and traded for veteran Eric Stahl, signed elite winger Taylor Hall, and acquired some good depth pieces like Cody Eakin and Tobias Reeder for the Sabres. This was the year the Sabres would compete for a playoff spot, so they told us. The Sabres added these two players along to their promising yet underperforming core starring Jack Eichel, Sam Reinhardt, Jeff Skinner, Rasmus Dahlin, Rasmus Ristolainen, and Linus Omark. With this group of guys, the Sabres should have at least competed for a playoff spot in the extremely difficult East Division. Oh, and did I mention this was the COVID season, which means that all the typical divisions were rearranged, and what the Sabres got was was the worst of them all. They were placed together with Penguins, Capitals, Bruins, Islanders, Rangers, Flyers, and Devils. Now there was still some hope, but things started to fall apart in training camp when Jack Eichel picked up a seemingly minor upper body injury, but that quickly passed as the season began, and boy did the Sabres not realize this. They started rocky in division where that wasn't good enough, going 4-4-2 four, four, and two in the first month. And this was the result when the Sabres had all of their star power. So these early results were troubling, very troubling. It was also concerning how the Sabres struggled in their own zone, giving up three goals or more in seven of their opening ten games. And after this tough start, the Sabres got even more bad luck when they had a COVID outbreak. And after this, their season really fell apart. The defense kept sucking, and even worse, their scoring dried up. Buffalo got shut out three times in the month of February, and then we got to the month of March. Oh, don't the Sabres love March. The Sabres started the month by going on a record-breaking 12-game losing streak, which was bad even for them. Ralph's tactics were horrendous, but instead of changing up styles, he would sit players that didn't fit. But not just any players. Sure, Cody Eakin was playing terribly. Sure, Taylor Hall had only scored twice. But those players don't need to sit. They're vital parts of this failing team. You know who isn't? Jeff Skinner. That's what the brilliant Ralphie Boyd thought. Now, you may ask me once again, 
did this move by sitting Jeff Skinner improve his game or the team's game? No, and actually the exact opposite happened. Skinner continued to suck, and so did the team. The Sabres lost 5-2 in three of four games in the beginning of March, choked to Philly, then got shut out in two straight games, first to Pittsburgh, then to Washington. This losing streak was an absolute meltdown from the team. And did I mention that Eichel had gone down with a season-ending neck injury in the middle of this? Yeah. Things were pretty bad for the Sabres, and so was Ralph Kruger. Throughout this entire losing streak, fans were demanding that Kruger change his tactics, change up lines, change something. Instead, he crossed his arms, blamed the players, and stayed true to his plans, even if it meant the team's season went down the drain. In a make-or-break season for the team, they were folding hard. And because of this, Ralph Kruger lost his job. On May 17, 2021, Ralph Kruger was fired by the Buffalo Sabres, along with his defensive coach, Steve Smith. Kruger left the Sabres last in the East with a ghastly 6-18-4 record with just 16 points, and at that time, just 36 goals on 5-on-5 five five play. Kruger would be replaced by another of his assistants, Don Granado, who would oversee the rest of that turbulent season and actually win the permanent head coaching gig in Buffalo that summer. Kruger, on the other hand, would go down as arguably the worst Sabres coach in recent memory, beating out names like Ron Rolston, Dan Bousma, Ted Nolan, and Phil Housley. Kruger's final record here in Buffalo was 36-49-12, and, and his outside-of-the-box hiring had backfired badly. His firing was the first of a major fire sale in Buffalo, and to this day, he doesn't have a job in professional hockey. Ralph Kruger was not only a disappointment, but a terrible stuck-up old head who played a very chipping, slow, and defensive brand of hockey, and his firing was inevitable and necessary. Hopefully now, the Sabres can move on and pick up the pieces with their new head coach in Don Granado and this current young core, because Lord knows us Sabres fans can't take another Ralph Kruger. We really can't.